this evening. Even as the 70-hour work debate rages on, IT graduates are facing a problem of a different kind, a different magnitude. In FI24, the tech trio TCS, Infosys and Wipro have together cut over 63,000 jobs. And that's because global tech demand is on the wane and so is discretionary spending. What's worse? The hiring picture is unlikely to change anytime soon. So the question is, when will the sector see a reversal for good? And how should Trekkies brace for such challenging times? And to discuss uh, this and more, we now are joined by Aditya Narayan Mishra, who's the MD and CEO of uh, CL HR Services. Aditya, thanks very much for joining us this evening. Now, considering we're seeing global unprecedented trends playing out, would it be right to say that this perhaps is the lowest and things are expected to look up here? How long will this slump persist? I think there are two factors which are playing here. One is the global uncertainty, the geopolitical tensions which we see. And as a result, a lot of large corporations around the world are hesitating to spend on IT. So that's uh, one side of it. The other side of it is the automation drive which we are seeing. And as a result, uh, there are a lot of entry-level transactional repetitive tasks are getting automated and as a result, the number of people that are required to deliver the output that they did in the past comes down. And these two factors contributing together, we see a bit of a slump. As we go forward, I think the demand will pick up a bit more. In our study, last year versus this year, we see a decline of about 5%. However, this silver lining is that companies are hiring for skills which are more complex, higher, newer technologies. So all that hiring is happening. So that's the good part of it. So you are saying that companies are looking at hiring, but they're looking at hiring for different skill sets or skill sets that include AI, for instance, or skills of the future. I'm going to come to that point there, but let me first ask you, how are these changes really reflecting in pay packets for freshers that are entering the industry? I think the uh, people who are uh, bringing with them higher levels of skills, like let's say, as you rightly said, AI, ML, uh, cloud, some of the higher levels of uh, development like uh, full stack development, DevOps, some of those uh, engineers who can deal with cloud, uh, as some higher levels of uh, analytics tools. So then the pay package of the freshers is on the higher side. And then secondly, the freshers who are being hired for global competency centers where the focus is a lot more on the quality of problem solving. So there the freshers get significantly paid higher compared to the traditional salaries that we have seen in the software services companies. All right, let me also, also bring in this point about attrition rates. I mean, if you see the IT earnings, there's been a decline in attrition rates. Now, experts say that this decline in attrition really paints a rather grim picture. If you look at the other side, considering that there is a lack of jobs and hence many people are forced to stay put and work and perhaps in some cases, even uh, 70 hours per week. So w w do, do weigh in on this point about uh, attrition going down and how that is really impacting workforce in the IT sector. So attrition uh, going down is a, is a reflection of the market demand. When the market is very hot, a um, uh, lot of services companies have a lot of projects to deliver. They don't have adequate people, so they keep on, they go on a hiring spree. Uh, that we saw in 2021, uh, just after the first wave of COVID. So, uh, you know, the market is very different right now. That's number one. Number two, I think the skills that uh, IT companies are looking at, whether it is the IT services or products or global competency centers, all of them are looking at little higher levels of problem solving, your ability to analyze a business context, how to deal with generative AI, work alongside it. It is no more about your ability to code. Uh, today, tools are uh, co-piloting, working as a co-pilot to uh, develop a program. 
But I think the software engineers, which the industry is looking for today, is uh, all about their ability to solve a problem, their ability to appreciate a business context and give a solution. I think that is uh, uh, the challenge. And uh, that kind of talent is not in a huge supply. And hence, uh, you know, there is uh, uh, the attrition has come down in general, but the people with those niche skills are continuing to be in demand. So we will see that uh, that kind of talent to be retained, the companies have to pay a little more. They have to adjust their compensation policy strategy to make sure that those high caliber talent is attracted and is retained. And I think it's also um, uh, the responsibility of uh, all of these companies to to sort of upskill their employees, considering that the Gen AI revolution that we've seen has been, um, you know, pretty quick. Uh, we were talking about Chat GPT just about last year, and now you have uh, so many companies really coming up with their own LLMs, etc. So the the big point really is about companies looking at upskilling their employees as well, because within the government of India's uh, policy, uh, you know how how students get trained on AI. I will certainly take a lot of time to come in. I want to also bring you in, Aditya, on this issue about moonlighting and how we saw a lot more, a lot many people take up uh, jobs outside of their regular jobs, contract jobs. So how is that uh, sector shaping up? See, upskilling is something which uh, IT industry always focused on and large companies particularly focused on. But today, uh, uh, the ability to upskill is a lot more democratized. Even if a company which is very small in size, today has access to so my good question quality on contract tools. jobs. Uh, no, I'm talking about the upskilling part of it, uh, where a company had limited resources earlier to upskill their existing employees. Hence, they had to continuously hire. But today, uh, upskilling platforms are many, upskilling tools are available. And hence, even if somebody is a very small company is able to continuously upskill its own employees and uh, bring them on board, that's number one. Uh, keep them with them for a long time, that's number one. The second one is about uh, uh, contract employees as a concept or outsourcing as a concept is today a lot more accepted and a lot more commonplace than it was a few years ago. So someone with a niche skill is today willing to come on a particular contract for a fixed duration of time, and the organization is willing to invest on that person through the contract right. staffing group and take that person right. for the specific period of time. And after the project is over, the either the person is offered a job to work in a permanent uh, roles of the company, right. or the person is let uh, let gone off. So that's a pretty much today right. Right. a right. very common place. Five years ago, the number of the percentage of people on contract staff were less than 10%, but today it's closer to 20%. So there is a huge increase there. And which is why you see, considering the slump flexible. that we're seeing in the uh, IT sector, that they are on that note, thanks very much. I'll have to cut short that uh, conversation right here in the interest of time. We're completely running out of time. Thanks very much once again now for joining us this evening. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.